Have you talked to your parents about what happened? Um, I told them I was worried about stuff. About what stuff? I said that, well, they knew I was upset about Travis, and I feel really bad by the way I was acting, because I wasn't, especially toward my grandparents. There were why, a lot of times Why are they not surprised that you're sitting here talking to me about this? What, what do you mean? They're not surprised. They're Obviously. concerned. They're, they're hurt. I haven't, but my other detectives have. And they're very concerned with you. But they kind of suspected that you had something to do with Travis's death as well. Whose no, parents think no, that? Th that's because I told them that a lot of people were dropping my name. And I said, I'm not worried about it because I didn't do it. I said, but it's very much, it's hurting my reputation right now. And it's made, it's casting me in a bad light. I wouldn't be worrying about your reputation right now. I'd be worrying about the rest of your life. That means nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, the, my reputation will affect the rest of my life. So I am worried about my reputation. You gonna continue with the story then that you weren't in Mesa on the fourth, you weren't in Travis's house, you didn't have sex with him that day, and you had nothing to do with his murder. Those pictures are, I don't know, to me, pictures are very compelling. Um, I know that they can be modified, I know they can be altered, and date and time stamps, I don't know, but I, I think they can be I didn't with. modify anything. I don't think you would. We take absolutely special care of what we do. I know. We actually take an image of that card, or let's say you get a computer, we take an image of that hard drive and make a copy of it. We don't even touch your hard drive. We just work with the copy. And that's exactly what we do with the photos. We don't work with the originals. We just make an exact digital copy of everything, move it over so we don't touch it. And then we analyze it. And our guys are so good Every case that you've ever done that I know of has never been lost in court. It's been argued and argued and argued. There's no way that they duplicate uh, or that they enhance or that they change or that they do anything to a photo. If I'm found guilty, what happens? You don't have to pay the price. Well, what's the price? I don't know. Don't you know what the sentences are, the, the sentences that are carried for something? It depends like on your situation, how old you are, depends on the type of crime, it depends on whether you show remorse or not. And part of that remorse is at least coming clean. When somebody doesn't come clean, I don't see any remorse. I don't know if a judge would see any remorse. I don't know if a jury would see any remorse. But I don't know. That's not for me to decide. My job is to investigate, find out who did it, why they did it, and present it to a court. And that's it. I just can't imagine. You have something to tell me, but you're, you're just so resistant. I know you're afraid, but you're already going through it right now. There's no backing up. There's no backing up to yesterday. There's no backing up to that day. It already happened. And unfortunately, you're going to have to face the consequences. Um, you know, if, if I did that, I would... I'd be fully ready to face the consequences. Um, I'm not really for things like, you know, I'm all for the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but there's, there's no evidence to show anybody else did that. None. Well, I, I'm just... You think we'd find somebody else's fingerprint if they did that? Possibly. There's something that happens. You keep saying gloves. There's things that happen when people wear gloves. Then we can actually see that, oh, somebody wore gloves in this case. Nobody wore gloves in this case. Nobody. 
Oh, no I'm, I'm just it. saying that if I were to carry out something like that, I would have worn gloves. I've nobody else, nobody else did this. There's no evidence to show that anybody else did this but you. You were the only one. That is it. And I'm not seeing any remorse. I'm not seeing any anything from you to make me believe anything otherwise. You can continue to say, I didn't do it. Well, but you're the kid that got caught on videotape stealing the candy. And you continue to say, it wasn't me. I have the proof. I have the pictures. It wasn't me. I don't think you would, you would admit to it if somebody, if your own mother saw you do this and she told me, yeah, I saw her do this, you would say, no, it wasn't me. Why won't you admit to it? I just can't. I didn't kill Travis. I just didn't. I did not take his life. Did you have anything to do with the death of Travis? Not, I don't think I had anything directly to do with it, but I feel responsible somewhat for it. Then what can you tell me about his death? You know a lot more about it than I do. When I say I feel responsible, it's because I was, I wasn't planning to go there at all and he really wanted me to go. I told him no, and I would have if it weren't for Ryan, and there's nothing really with Ryan and I, in fact, he has been very hesitant to move anything forward because he's not sure about me. Um, he said a lot of people are talking, I'll just tell you that right now, I really wish this would get solved so that we can just put it behind us. Um, maybe that's a good thing because he's not an active church member anyway, but the reason I feel is because if I had, if it weren't for Ryan, I would have folded and I would have just scrapped all my plans and spent all of my days there. Um, but I didn't, and I stood strong, and he got mad and he got sad and he guilted me. He didn't get really mad, he just kind of guilted me. And finally, I was like, whatever, fine, and we hung up. I feel that if I would have gone there, I could have, that I could have done something. I could have. But you were there, Jody. You were there on Wednesday before. Can I, can I ask you, I don't know if you know this. Oh, I have a camera in my storage unit that I don't use anymore, but the Travis and I used to use frequently. Mm -hmm. And we took pictures with it. Um, this is, I don't know. This is kind of... Do you remember taking these pictures? There were many pictures. I... Vaguely. There were... We took tons and tons of pictures. Some I saved, most we deleted. Um, some he sent me through his phone. And he I, usually deleted all pictures like this. Yeah, well, before he any, got there... Any pictures like this that I found anywhere on his computer, camera, anything, they were deleted. Well, prior to him getting his camera, all those pictures were on my camera. Mm -hmm. um, so... All I these have, same pictures? Um, I don't know. I don't know. We took, um, we took a bunch the week before I left. Um, we took a bunch over the last se six or seven months. Um, we took over oh, last year, even when we were still dating, but we would delete them mostly. Um, there were some that he sent me that I didn't delete. Um, what I'm asking is, is it possible that, you know, that my memory card would have been in his camera? They're interchangeable. How do you know they're interchangeable? I don't, that's what I'm asking is what kind of memory card it was. Just a regular little... SD card. Well, because I've got one, I've got one that's like this big, and it's thin, it's like a cracker, mm -hmm. and the one I use on my professional camera is like this size, and it's more kind of like that thick, and the little one is really thin, and it's got like little thingies here, 
deleting it and the big one looks like that on the metal part. So that one obviously probably wouldn't be interchangeable because it's a cannon and it's a nice it's thing. Not but the other one, I don't know. I don't know. Your camera's here. His camera's there. He just bought that camera. Well, the other camera that I used before that's broken now, it's in my storage mm -hmm. unit, but it's still there. And you're saying those pictures are on that camera? I'm, no, what I'm saying is I had several memory cards for this camera that I don't have anymore. And so I guess... I, it's so far-fetched, but I guess it's possible that my my card. So you're saying somebody took your your pictures or your card and is framing you and put no, that into no, his no, no. camera. No, no, I'm just saying that if if my memory cards were left at his house, he could he would have used those for his camera. I don't know. I don't know. I can explain the blood though, and I can explain the hair. I don't know about the thin print. I can't explain the blood or the hair. Well, the hair, there's hair everywhere, and probably every square inch of that house, my hair. Yeah. If you sweep it, you'll get hair everywhere. All over around the toilet, around in the shower. I don't know about the shower, because the shower gets used, but definitely around the bottom of the um, the sink area. And maybe it still doesn't trash. explain the hair to me. It had a follicle in it. You haven't been there since April. There's no way. No way. The blood? No. Well, the, the blood is mixed with his, and that's the blood that he that he bled that day when he was killed. Well, print. I don't know Absolutely. if you can check how fresh the blood was. No, we can't check how fresh it is, but we can go by where it is. Oh, okay. Because I cut myself when and I was. You, and you're saying that that blood that you cut yourself with back, who knows when, well, was still on the wall oh, in the exact same spot. Oh, I don't know. Not where the wall. where the bloody palm print was. It was a glass that Travis had that I was using to wash Napoleon with. I used to give him that. And I dropped it, and when I picked up all the glass, and I'm pretty casual about it because I break glass at work all the time, and it's not a big deal, it's nothing to be scared of. And I was probably just being careless with it, and I sliced myself open. And Is that how you want to leave this? Just these far-fetched excuses on why your blood is there, why your hair is there, why your palm print is there, what pictures are there? I don't know about the pictures. That's how you want to leave this? I wouldn't want to. I seriously would not want to. You need to come out and tell me why this happened. I will not accept any other excuses. I will just move on with my investigation, with my final report, submitting all the conclusions and all the evidence. And we can just let the judge and the jury decide. You yourself said that if you were in my shoes, you would think that I was guilty. We can leave it in the hands of a jury. Test? We can do that. That's fine. Would that help me at all? I mean, you can't use them in court, but... Well, then there's no point in taking it. I thought those things can be used. In certain cases. In this case, If you want, I can check. Absolutely. If I passed a lie detector test, would that help me at all? Could help you. They're so weird anyway. This, this is, is your one opportunity to talk to me because I. It's going to be a while before I talk to you again, and it's not going to be in this kind of setting. Okay, do you understand what's going to happen to you? Well, we're going to, since these charges are out of Arizona, um, we're going to send you through the court system here. And then we're going to ask to extradite you to Arizona from California. That just means permission to, for you to bring you over because you're out of state limits. And the next time we talk could be in a whole different setting. Could be in a jail somewhere. I think this setting is a little bit better. But 
That's up to you. Jody, I know you were there. I know that Travis was either in the shower or just outside the shower when he was shot. And I know somebody who was extremely angry at him. He took a knife to him and couldn't stop. He couldn't stop. And before you knew it, it was all over. And then you panicked. And then you... I would, I've never been angry, that angry at him. Not enough for that. I've been so far angrier at other people, at other ex-boyfriends. Then tell me who could have done this? <clears throat> who did this? I don't know, but if I am... If I go to trial for this, and if I'm convicted for this, whoever did this is going to be sitting very pretty somewhere. Glad that it wasn't them. And it's my job to make sure that an innocent person does not go to jail. But I don't see an innocent person sitting in front of me. When I asked you, I always, I always ask this one question. Actually, it's two. First one is, did you kill Travis? And you kind of hesitate a little and said, I, have, I didn't have anything to do with that. Then I asked you a similar question. Did you have anything to do with Travis's death? You hesitated again. Well, that's because I feel like if I had gone to Arizona like you Most asked, people would say, no. Did you kill Travis? No. Well, I didn't, and I didn't have anything to do with it. Now, do I feel responsible? I've been carrying around guilt since I heard about it. Why do you feel responsible? If you felt responsible, it means you know something else. No, because it means I your think... actions led to his death. Because he always has guilted me. He's always guilted me. And the last so you time feel we somebody talked... else. You feel somebody else killed him. Well, yeah. For what reason? I don't know. I don't know then that. How do you feel guilty? Because if you don't know the reason. Here's why I feel guilty. The, one of the last times we spoke, he was guilting me about not coming to see him. And part of my heart still wanted to go see him. And another part just wants to move on and pursue this new avenue, which was in Utah. And there is a tinge of guilt. You know, when he would text me and he would say, hey, you want to come over and make out or want to da da da. Um, I didn't respond one night. And I just stayed strong and I didn't respond and then he called and called and called and then the next day he was like you don't care about me you don't love me you don't care I was there all alone and you didn't want to come and hang out you didn't want to come and keep me company and he says it not like that but in that tone but it's in the sweetest sweetest way and it's 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 guilt um, I still don't get the guilt I really don't. You keep explaining it, but it has nothing to do with whether he, because he guilted was killed me. or not. He How is you being there going to prevent him from being killed? Well, I kind of feel that if I had gone, that we could have been out watching well, a movie, or we could have, two people could have done something more than just him. I just feel like if, if, if there was some way that I, I could have prevented it. There's some way that I could have done something to stop it. And I told that to a few people, and they're like, well, you might have been killed too. Maybe, but maybe Travis would still be alive. Travis has done a lot for me, and I wouldn't hurt him. He introduced the gospel to me. Well, I have proof that says otherwise, Jody. I, I can't. I can't deny that. I can't deny that proof. And that proof is not pointing at anybody else. Nobody. Nobody in this entire world except you. Nobody. Nobody else was in that house that day. Except you. You were the only one. You and him. Alone. I didn't even go to Mesa. Can you check? Can you check the GPS on the car? Yes, we will check that. If it's, you know, and if that comes back and... And whatever. I've looked at the map and the way that you're saying that you travel, there is no Listen, way. When the last road trip Travis and I went on, we drove to Utah. One, I mean, I'm sorry, we drove to Oklahoma City. 
um, from Mesa, and one of our stops on the way was Roswell. After Ro he drove all night, and I slept. And then when after Roswell Museum, it was my turn to drive. And he's like, just get on this and drive 98 point something miles, and then we should be there. So I got on the road, and I drove 98.6 or 2 or whatever miles it was. And I woke him up, and I said, I don't think we're here. And, I, and he woke him up, and it was just like rolling fields forever. And I drove completely in the wrong direction. And I'm not saying, I don't know, I'm just saying I have a poor sense of direction. I got totally lost. I know maybe that's just bad luck. I got totally lost. No, even if you got totally lost, it doesn't explain all that time. It does not. I mean, if you went four hours here or five hours in the wrong direction, it still would well, not Well, at that one point, that I wasn't going anywhere because I ran out of gas. I was totally stranded. I was sitting like a sitting duck, and that's when I began. It was it was a little bit warm, and it wasn't too hot, but um, that's when I just, I read for a little bit. I already slept, um, and that's when I just started looking around the car and organizing stuff and getting trash together and had a couple bites to eat from snacks that I had, and when I was cleaning out under the seat, I found my phone charger, plugged it in, powered it on. There was no cell phone reception anywhere. So you've never seen his camera, his new camera? I don't know. He described it. Did you ever touch his camera? I've never seen it. Okay, so there's no reason your fingerprint should be on it. <laughs> okay. Because that thing's off at a lab right now, and they're hopeful that they can get some prints off the camera. Okay. And if your prints come back on that camera, what are you going to say? Well, they won't come back on it because I never touched it. That you still can't explain the rest of this stuff. I honestly can't explain the pictures. The other stuff, and it, or the palm print, the other stuff I can explain. No, you can't explain the blood either. Because that blood is in blood. I mean, that it's it's part of the print. Unless you cut yourself at the beginning of the year and left your palm print in blood, and it stayed there until he was killed. I cut myself. It wasn't the beginning of the year. It was before convention. No, you can't explain it. I'd, I'd have to say early March. That palm print is there in blood, partially yours and partially his. Is, is it possible that there's just like any other way in the universe that that could have gotten there? Possible. Probable is the question you need to ask. Probable is absolutely not probable. I understand that, but it is possible. Anything is possible. That is very compelling. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. That's why I travel here. Because I came here to arrest you. And get an explanation from you. That's the second reason. And since you're not giving me an explanation, I guess we'll just continue with the... With the uh, I just have no reason. reason to hurt Travis. You do have a reason to hurt Travis. What would my reason possibly be? There's a whole history of you two. But and everybody knows it. I have a whole history with other guys in Why like is everybody saying that you had something to do with his death? Why is everybody saying that you are capable of hurting him? Everybody says it. I don't know why anyone... So don't tell me that you're not capable. I don't even hurt spiders. Have you ever had any anger issues before? Never in your past? I've, I've had arguments. I, we're trying to say well, everybody has arguments. I'm talking about anger. Just mm -hmm. absolute anger. You just, you lose it sometimes. No, I had a nervous breakdown once. You taking any medication or anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, I had a nervous breakdown when my boyfriend and I were arguing once, and, um, and he, he began to argue with me in a way that was totally different from how we, we had ever argued before. And he was just like, every time I'd say something, he was like, blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of weird. Like, every time I tried to formulate a thought, and I was just sad and I was crying, every time I tried to formulate a thought, he would interject and, and twist it. And it was like the weirdest 
psychological thing that had ever happened. And and the way I reacted was I, I went into my room, who's the guy I bought a house with. Um, I went into my room and shut the door. We had separate bedrooms. And I was in, in his room and went down the hall into my room and shut the door. And I just remember hyperventilating. And that's all. And I was crying. And then um, I went to get something out of my car. And when he saw that, he um, maybe thought I was going to leave. So he asked me for the key to his truck and pulled behind my car because he thought that because I was so upset, I shouldn't drive anywhere. But I mean, that's other than arguments, no anger issues. That I can remember. Oh, I kicked a dog once. I was a freshman in high school. And I love, love, love animals. And one, we had this dog, his name was Doggy Boy. And my parents, until this dog that they have now, have never been able to, and I don't mean just them, we as a family have never been able to care for a dog properly as far as give it attention and take it for walks and be consistent. Um, so this dog stayed in the backyard a lot, and he stayed tied up on, you know, in the shade with plenty of, you know, leeway. At one point, though, he was untied, and I took the trash out, and he, and this is when my little brother and sister were still in diapers, and he tore this, it was a diaper trash, and he tore diapers all over the yard. And of course, I had to clean it up, and when diapers get wet, and they're like this jelly, spongy, weird stuff, mm -hmm. and I just, I got mad, and I, I just kicked him with my right foot, and he just moved a few feet, and he didn't yelp or anything, but he just went, he ran away, and I never saw him again after that. And, I mean, that's probably an anger issue, I guess. But well, one time kicking a dog is an anger issue. It changed my world as far as animal treatment goes, because I just, I've never seen him since. And I need to apologize for that to him. I know it sounds weird in my relationship with animals. It's kind of like they're like people, too. You know, they have souls. What you need to do is you need to apologize to Travis. But you just refuse. Listen. You know, I can't help you anymore if you're not gonna if you're not gonna help yourself. You ask me. I really prior. can't. I can't, Jody. You can keep talking until you blue in the face, and I can't continue to listen to lies. Do you have anything else that you need to tell me? You know, you would ask me what have I been up to in the weeks since I got back? Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Just what, what have you been up to? Because I know this thing has to be weighing pretty heavy on me. I've been trying to put his death behind me. If I... If I did anything that had anything to do with his death in any way, it's not if to me. I wouldn't. It's not if. It's not if at all. Well, to me it is. I would I would be more than remorseful. So maybe something you're blocking out of your head? I don't think so. I mean, I tend to write everything down. I tend to... I just finished the book, The Road Less Traveled. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, the true definition of sanity is dedication to reality at all costs. Mm -hmm. So I think at times, you know, I may have, you know, prayed or meditated upon a certain way, you know, like, like me being um, wealthy or something like that, but. Well, this is definitely reality. We are sitting here inside of an office, the sheriff's department, and you are facing first degree murder charges. What is the difference? You are going to be booked into jail and eventually you will be brought back to Arizona and you will stand trial. That's the reality. And once you realize that, I think you'll be better for it. And if you really wanted to embrace reality, you would sit here and explain to me why this happened. But you refuse. You refuse to embrace reality. Why. I don't know why he was killed. I don't know why. I had issues with Travis. If anything, he had more issues with me. Um, 
I've had worse issues with other people. They're all still alive. I'm still friends with my ex-boyfriends. They're all still alive. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And there's one thing that I can never get out of my head. Ever since the first day I talked to you. It's, there's an old saying that, you know, someone's just not acting right. Look into it. You have not acted right from day one. From day one when I talked to you on that phone. I just sensed that you just, you weren't acting like somebody who used to love this guy, or who still loved him, I... even as a close friend. And even now, when I told you that I have all this evidence against you, and and that you're facing first-degree murder charges, you're, you're just not acting right, Jody. You're acting like somebody who's guilty. How so? tell me I know because I've been doing it a long time it's, it's taken me a long don't... time to, to figure it out but within the first 30 seconds to a minute of a conversation I can I know when somebody's acting right there's a certain way people act how did I act okay. it was it's not like think... it's not like TV it's not anything like that it's not what you see in the movies I see reality when I accuse somebody of committing uh, a heinous crime or you know something very serious reality hits in and they definitely act a certain way and that's not you you act just like everybody else who I accuse of doing a crime who did it and there's no other way to tell you is it because I'm not crying no it's not because of that what is it I mean, I'm not going to change how I act. No, so obviously you mean, can't change the way you're acting. You're no, acting. I mean, I am who I am. Okay, but... you're, you're sincere in the way you're acting. But uh, well, how you're, is just, it... you're just not telling the truth. How is it different? Well, it's not really something you need to focus on anymore. I think you need to focus on the truth, but it's something that you refuse. So if you don't, if you don't want to continue, then, then we'll just move on to the next step.